Hi there. Welcome everyone to this um, pre-recorded session of Totally Unscripted, um, where I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Will Nottman from Zaps NL, um, who's going to talk about cloud functions with Firebase. Hello, Will. Hey, Martin. Nice to finally be here <laughs> and to talk well, a bit about. Yeah, it's great to have you. So um, on previous shows, we've, we've mentioned um, uh, Google Cloud Functions and Cloud Functions for Firebase, but we haven't had any kind of um, information detail. So it's great that you've been able to uh, spare some time to um, to share. So what can you enlighten us about um, uh, Cloud Functions for Firebase? Yeah, you, you all know I've, I've, I've been working with Fscript for a few years now, and, and I really love love Fscript, like probably most of the people that are watching this show right now. Um, but recently, these cloud functions came up, especially cloud functions for Firebase and the normal Google Cloud functions, and starting to play with them as well made me just as enthusiastic about them as I am about uh, Google Fscript. So I think that, that you people also like to know what they're about, what they can do, how they are different from Google Fscript, um, they're a bit. They are not as easy to set up, but once you've done it a few times, it's it's all quite simple. So what I want to show you is how you can use these two at the same time. So do something with Fscript and have a limit, and especially I want to show something with URL fetch app, which has this annoying 100 megabyte mm -hmm. limit. Show sh I'll show you what the problem is with it and how I made a small solution just for the case of demonstration. Because I'm not really sure how to use it or, or why you want to use it in real time, but for demonstration, how to fetch some bigger files, but use cloud functions to do this for you. Um, I prepared it, I tested it all, and it worked. So as I think that the route that I took to make it work, I will try to do it live now <laughs> on screen. So try to keep up, follow up, and uh, if if something is unclear, then then let me know, and I'll try to do a step back. I think most of the people don't really know what cloud functions are, but I think they are in a way comparable to Google Apps Script in, in, in the way that it's just a small function that runs in the cloud, <laughs> hence the name, uh, and that, 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 that can be triggered on different ways. And the easiest way to trigger this function is just as uh, as Google Apps Script, as a, a URL. You call a URL, the function starts rolling and does something and results something to you. So this is this is what a, a cloud function does. The nice thing about these Firebase functions is that they not only can respond on HTTP triggers, but also on a, a pub sub channel that can set up, think of something change on a drive file or something change on Gmail. <clears throat> and also it can trigger on Firebase events. So when you put something in the database, you can have a whole function do some special tricks with it, return something to the database, or call other services. Just think it's 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 a bit like the glue in the in the cloud, what AppScript is for the G Suite, that kind of things. But it's really nice nice to play with, um, and they are a bit more powerful because one main advantage is you can actually pay for it and exceed some limits <coughs> that you might run into with. Like with F script, so um, I want to show you how to set up a function. I want to show you uh, a little trick how you can do this with all some free tools that are available online. Um, I want to show you the Google Cloud Shell that I've been testing them with. I am using C9.io, which is a really cool web development environment where you can easily deploy cloud functions. But I found that Google has something hidden in the in the cloud console. That you can just fire up and and uh, install your functions. So I I will go with you through this process to create these functions. And um, let's go. I, I did some preparation, so I try to do the step back and do them again. So we'll see. Now first, let's go to the problem I created. So we have a function here, and it wants to fetch this image, and this is a 100 MB image. So I was trying to see how, how what the length is, and if I if I look this one, it will say it's about 100 MB, I think. But when I add the file back to Drive, it will show up as a 10 megabyte file. And this, this is the reason URL fetch app can only fetch a file of 10 megabytes, and it's mostly a problem for most users to hit a, hit a limit on URL fetch app because at 100 MB, then it's not working anymore. So what 
what can you do if you want to use a file of 100 MB? So what I really want to do is to fetch from a function. To actually call a function, tell the function to fetch a file from me, and fetch the file from me, and actually let the function put the file from me in Drive and send back the Drive ID so I can use the file in Google Apps Script afterwards. So to, to create a function, you need an environment that runs Node.js, and the function are also written in, in Node.js. So if you're not really familiar with it, it's it's maybe a bit steep to to get a hang of it because Google Apps Script is a lot easier, and for Node you have to do some initial setup. But in the end, the language is you are writing is also JavaScript, and mm -hmm. I think once you you are starting to work with it, it all makes sense. It's it has a bit of different rules, some some different things that you should care about, like installing some dependencies. Think of it like uh, adding some libraries here. I, I imagine this is in Dutch, but you know what's here. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> and a note you also. So the main thing I do is I, I go to to console, a cloud platform project. Usually I go through this route because then I don't have to type the whole URL. And I also have created a, a, a project here, Cloud Functions Demo. So when I go to the Google Cloud Platform down here, is it? Can you can you see this? Yeah. Okay. We have this little icon on top here, and this is the Google Cloud Shell. And actually, this this gives you a a, a Linux environment. <laughs> with most of the Google uh, yeah. stuff installed already. Yeah. And I'm not really sure if Firebase was installed because when I looked, it was installed, but it can be, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's user-based. So it's one session for you as a logged-in user and it seems like there is some persistent storage there where some stuff keeps being here. So you're starting a shell and here we are and we are in the cloud shell. Some people might be familiar with this some people maybe a bit less, but you really need a shell if you want to use Firebase. So actually, if we go to the Firebase console, that's Firebase. And um, you can create a Google a new project here. I had created a project, but for the case of this, I will add a new project here in Firebase. I will call it live functions demo <coughs> that we are in Netherlands. It's on Google Cloud Functions and you have the Firebase Cloud Functions which are called Cloud Functions for Firebase. So are <laughs> so they separate things then? Is that something? Mm -hmm. People. No, no, not really. They, they are in the bank. They are exactly the same because when you create yeah. functions on Firebase, you can also see them in your Google Cloud Functions console. Right. Uh, the main difference is that they use a different SDK, as they call it. So you use right. a different set of tools to deploy them. Okay. And actually, actually, I'm I like the Firebase set of tools more than the Cloud Functions mm. tool. And these were the first I was I was using, and I also use them to for my Firebase database stuff so I I was stuck with I got stuck yeah. with the Firebase uh, tools nice and I think to work in the same environment if you use yeah absolutely and, and actually I like the Firebase layout and the Firebase views a lot better than the Google Cloud views I think it's just a matter of taste so um, when we go back to the to the shell and we want to say we go to Firebase functions here they probably you can say just let's go and it asks you to install the firebase tools well for the sake of it i'll just do it mm -hmm. in my console to install the firebase tools I'm, i know they have to be upgraded here so they probably just update and you see so you, 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 you don't need anything else you just can start use this in your in your console and you, you think you might only need to do this once yeah. Um, yes. And you don't. 
once you've done it once for one project, it seems to be there for all the others. Or do you need, need to do it for each pro, um, console project you set up? No, no, you can do it. it it's persistent. As okay. far as I know, and you, you see, I get a, I, I think I get a great error message here, so I think it's a bit out of scope to see what's happening now. <coughs> but if you have done this and it should work, then you should be able to run the Firebase command. Yes, it's it's working. So it's yeah. installed here. That's just. So we have installed Firebase tools, and then we have to do two things. We can use Firebase init to initialize your Firebase tools for this project. So let's just do that, Firebase edit. And then you get this, this nice user interface. And you can say, what, what do you actually want to use? No, I say I want to use functions. Mm -hmm. And it will just set up your environment to use Firebase functions. Here it sees that we already have a project uh, uh, set up, but it will ask you for a project now. You choose your project, and then you you're good to go. So for now, I want to switch projects because I just created another one. And I say it should be live functions demo. And I don't want to use an alias now. Live. And if you don't have a, a function, I go now to the to the function folder. So actually, what you want to do now <laughs> is you want to create, you want to write a function. It's just a file with some mm -hmm. with some uh, data, and upload it to Firebase Functions. Let's create a file. Maybe that's the better start. So if you, you there is some a code editor available here, and I found this really nice in the Cloud Shell. So it's easy to just stay in there and use the tools that are available and you see files here and there is this option launch code editor so i'm launching it and it will start uh and you can compare this with the google apps scripts editing tool so you see my my folder that i'm in here you see a folder functions node modules yeah. that are installed and some other files and these files are the same as if, if we list if we list the folder right here <laughs> you see these are the same files. So this is this is my environment now. This is the functions directory. And I actually created a function that's called index.js. And you you need one function that is called index.js. And you see right. this is a whole lot of, of code. So I'm going to make a new one. So is the code. index.js just created for you? When you create the project, no, it's not created for you. You you need to create right. one yourself. So this is a file I'm going to create. A new file in here, and I call it index three JS. So we have an empty file right now. So if you want to create a function, you should initialize it with some sort of trigger. And you can see them in the documentation here if you if you want. But for now, I'm going. I think I'm going to skip that part. I just um, let you know all functions have a have, uh, start with exports, then mm -hmm. your function name, and this is the trigger that you want to do. And functions .https on request actually is the same as your let's say your do post or do get function in Google Apps Script. Right. So actually, when I'm going to deploy a functions.https on request <coughs> on Firebase Functions, it will return to me an URL that is the URL of my project with slash on sort to fetch. So it's quite easy to later know what URL is calling what function. And you can create a lot of these um, separate from each other. So. This is answer for the fetch. This is a like demo, and just not two might be enough for now. So this function is not doing anything, but we need some some more installation here to actually start a Firebase function. And these is these are called some modules that we need to load. And I think for the first time you're it's something like uh, I I don't really get it, but this is how Node works. Every 
um, module you want to use, you have to load it in, in your index file. And you see that I'm, I already did some stuff here. For Firebase functions and using the Firebase database, uh, the, the admin and the functions are needed. But I, are we going to use this one? So we have a function and we require Firebase mm -hmm. functions. So we can actually have, you see this functions call is calling. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. so HTTPS um, uh, method is available because you load the Firebase functions into the functions constant. Constant. Um, probably this is this is enough for now to have it actually work. Now this is uh, exports. Uh, the only request is some some uh, Express Notes JS. You, I think you can look up in the Express documentation what you can do with it. But you get a request, and the URL parameters are uh, request dot query, and you have request dot body for do post parameters. And the rest is the response that you are going to send back. So if we just respond with res.send, oh, OK, then we probably should be able to get a response that says all OK. We have to make sure uh, for this on request functions that we always do a res.send, because otherwise the function will time out in a minute and will okay. not stop running. All OK, two. So these are two functions here in index three. That's let's go back to my cloud shell because my file is ready. I think it's it's ready to to deploy. And let's see how if this is all that we need to do. I really wonder, by the way, if, if it was so easy. <laughs> if I'm not forgetting something. You can still follow it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, I go to the functions uh, directory. So the idea is that you have a, a function folder and, uh, and and use your put your index files in there. Um, now I have to the original index file that I had. I move it to or yes, and I the one that I actually created. Okay. Yeah. So, I, so my index file is now. Just close this one. So if you have installed these Firebase modules and you are using these modules, and now we have these Firebase uh, functions, and this, this is what you do with all node projects that you are using. You do MPS install Firebase functions and save. And actually what it's, what it's doing, it will install for you these functions stuff, put them in a, in a nodes folder and actually when you upload a function it uploads also all these modules that you are that you need to run think of it like the libraries for google apps script that yeah. you will yeah. add to your project but you add the libraries that you're going to use in your function as well and upload them we use save because this is this is quite important and i i think very experienced node developers think it's it's logical but I, I wasn't that this kind of person. <laughs> uh, yeah. Save uh, creates a package.json file. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, and uh, it actually lists all the dependencies that your functions are going to use. So I, for my demonstration, I had I had installed a lot of other stuff here, but you see that the Firebase function is already added here, mm -hmm. and Google needs this file as well to know what modules that are installed. Now, deploying the functions is actually Firebase deploy. And what I do is only functions, because if you deploy everything, then it looks for hosting and database rules as well and stuff like that. Right. But I do Firebase deploy only functions. And let's hope that I'll just wait for a bit. You see it's creating two functions. Answer mm -hmm. the fetch, and it's creating my demo. Ah, and there we go. Mm -hmm. So we have we get we get a result. It gets a link to your project console. Let's refresh this one now. Uh, live functions demo functions, and here they are listed. Two functions: my function answer mm -hmm. the fetch and function my demo. And there is a URL here. So 
let's just open the URL, see what it does. Ha. All okay. Mm. Yeah. And my demo should say all okay too. Mm. So this is very very much comparable with uh, with uh, Google Apps scripts, I guess. Yeah. So what we this is this all okay is of course not very impressive. Like this is not that's logical. A, this is not a function. This this is something you can do with Google Apps Script as well. But if we go back to this to this problem we had with um, this document, mm -hmm. let's go to to my function and run it. If if I download this whole file, you can see it's from Wikipedia. It's quite slow to download. Let's save it here. And if you probably can see it, it when I put it in my screen, it's, it's like 100 yeah. me megabytes. So it's 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 a very big map. Okay, I put a map Great Britain here. <laughs> you like it? <laughs> um, when I run this and I add it to 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 Drive, it will work. It just takes a while. I go to my recent files here. Oh, you can see I, I did it before. You can see this fire, and it, it says very nicely it's 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 ten. Right. Yeah. So this is something that's really not working. Now what I what I what I want to do now is to actually do it from Firebase, and I will show you some code I have created for it, because let's see for the for the time being I think we manage it. Go to my functions, uh, rename it to index four. So if you open this file, you see I've I have added a lot more um, modules here, and I've I've been testing two things. I've been testing some authorization and some credential stuff mm -hmm. to actually do some authenticated calls from cloud functions. These work too, so it might be nice for another time. But I was thinking this is maybe not necessary at all. And I had this answer the fetch function here, where I I was thinking I can pass the token I guess from Google Apps Script yeah. like this OAuth token, yeah. and use it in my function to do an authenticated call to Google Drive. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when I when I have my request, I put the token in there, mm -hmm. I give a file name, and I give a URL as well in the parameters. Then it should be able to to add Google Drive and fetch the file and send it back to me. So I've been I've been trying this yesterday and doing some stuff, but it works. So I will show you the code how it, this will look like in a in a cloud function. So we require uh, uh, three modules that are um, important here. You can ignore the other ones for now. Four modules because request is also very important. Uh, the Google module. These are the Google APIs, and it contains all these drive and uh, all Google APIs that are available. Yeah. It's just a note um, package of it. The Google Art, it's the Google Authorization Library. You need this to create an OI2 client. Mm -hmm. um, and you need the request function here. And this is needed to do an external request. One thing I should mention for Cloud Functions and also Cloud Functions for Firebase, to be able to do an external request, you have to be on a paid plan. Right. So. Actually, I always go on the, this is the Spark plan, so this is not mm -hmm. working now. And I'm going to switch to another uh, project, which I called Gas Fetch. And it's on a Blaze plan. And actually, I always go to Blaze plan. On my testing environment, the pace you go is really low for mm -hmm. now. So I'm not worrying too much about it. There is a, a plan in between that's 25 a month. But I'm not spending 25 on the Blaze plan right now. So just to underline that, um, if you're wanting to fetch external files, then you, you won't be able to do it on the free. You need to. No. 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 That's, that's right. Good that's that, yeah. That's good to know. But people have been asking to to pay for Google Apps Script to uh, get these extra limits as well. So yeah. I think the solution lies a bit in you can pay for. For the flame, it's not too much if you have a project on here and have some functions running. I think it's a pretty good deal, actually. 
So do you, do you roughly know how much, how, how is it quoted in terms of external files? Is it the, the payload size or is it the number of requests? It's the, it's the number of bytes that are streamed through the right. network that, that okay. I know of. And what I, what I, what I know is that if, if it's sent in between Google's uh, servers, that it's not counted. But someone okay. might, might, might correct me on that. But as far as I know, that, that inter internal ingression, however you mm -hmm. call it, is, um, is free. So it's, I, I think passing the data from Drive to Firebase and stuff like that is, is still free. It's just the yeah. outgoing traffic that's, that's being yeah. charged. So for here, we're going to, uh, to do the same thing as well, Firebase uh, init. Firebase use, I think we have to. Um, uh, to to change to to another function to another project here, gas fetch. So to to get back to to the whole process, when we when we go to um, when we when we call this function, at first we take the token from our call, which is the, which is sent by by the script. We want to know a file name. Then we create an authorization um, method here, and we create an OR2 client. And the only thing that's actually needed here is this OR2 client set credentials and put in the access token. This is this is needed to actually make your um, Google API do the, the call with the, with the proper authentication. So I have to figure out what's what I really needed here, but this is something I, I found out yesterday. Then you add the file metadata. This is this is actually also just borrowed from some examples on the Google documentation. And the media. And I found out that you can actually stream your uh, results right into the body of the media that you upload to Drive. Because this is actually the request, and request is a node command to get the contents of a URL. So this is, very simple. The request actually okay. makes yeah. makes a stream, and it streams it right into uh, the Google Drive uh, mm -hmm. body. And then we call Drive files create uh, the resource, the media, uh, the ID. We authorize it with the R2 client we created. If everything is fine, then we send back the file ID mm -hmm. we get from the the Drive call. And this is a bit different than you are used to in in Google Apps Script, but this whole syntax and how you how you create these these uh, calls is very well described. I think you're also mm -hmm. in, the, in the documentation. So when we deploy this function, Firebase functions, uh, Firebase deploy. Sorry, only functions. So we're going to deploy this function to my new project. We don't have to really wait for it here. I see my answer, the fetch file is right here. This is the URL. Mm -hmm. I always copy it from this part. We have put the URL here in our URL fetch app. So the URL fetch app is actually fetching my function. Yeah. It, it sends some URL parameters, like the URL I want to take. Yeah. This is the URL of this image the OI token of the script app. I'm doing a get root folder to get the proper scopes here. Mm -hmm. And I do, uh, I call it image.jp, but for now, for it, I will call it Martin demo. And get context text is not really needed, um, mm -hmm. but I want to lock the ID of the file. So. Mm -hmm. It should be when I say URL fetch, I actually I say to my function, here you have this URL, put it on drive for me and give me back the ID. Yeah. So when I do this fetch from Firebase functions, and I, let's look if, I, if it's deployed, yes, it's deployed now, so I will start it. And while this is running, it's nice to actually show here some logs. As you can see, this is some real logging of functions yeah. that are being called. So actually we should see and it's a little bit, yeah, here it goes. Function execution started, so my function mm -hmm. is called. 
And here it says it file is. name. Oh, it says my token as well. I was logging it for some demonstration, and some debugging purposes. It's still in there. So is that in the function script? Yeah, to, yeah. I did some console logs here. See, Got you. if I'm yeah. console logging here, then you can yeah. see it locked in here. So you can take a live a live view on how your functions are running. I see it's ready. So when everything went right, we should have an ID here in the logs. And here it is. We okay. have a file ID. And if it's OK, then we need to have a new file in here. Martin demo. Martin demo here. Yeah, here it is. Mm -hmm. And you see the file size is 103M. Mm -hmm. So this is something that works. And this is the function, put it in there. And actually, we can go go ahead and do our Google Apps script stuff with the file yeah. um, and just be where we are comfortable with, but have this hard work done by the Firebase function. So I, I covered a bit like setting it up. Um, yeah. I wanted to show you this editor because the whole environment is ready to go for, mm -hmm. for deploying functions. And I have seen some questions in the Google Apps script community as well for what environment should I use, how do I set it up? But mm -hmm. I would say, there is something there for you. That's great. Well, well I've got the live show to do now. Um, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but thanks, because that opens up so many ideas in my head in terms of what to do. And I think the way you've led um, us through a project and the kind of the tips you've given us along the way will certainly, um, I think, make it a lot easier for um, other people in the community to, to start having a play with as well. I hope so. I'm sorry. I I see it's 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 15 minutes longer than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, is what I get paid for the edit. <laughs> ah, perfect. <laughs> I don't get paid. <laughs> uh, you should talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, real thanks for that, and um, we look forward to actually seeing you come on again for a, a future episode um, of Totally Unscripted. Um, there's probably lots of follow-up questions, I think, that um, might come out as a result of this. Thank you.